Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. How is everyone today? If you're in the last stream and are hanging out now, thanks for staying. And if you're just now tuning in, thanks for joining us. We've got a really exciting stream ahead of us. I'm your host, Shauna Lynn, and I'm here with the super talented designer, Mike Jones. How are you today, Mike? I'm great. <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. <laughs> right, right on. <laughs> so, one sec. <laughs> it's all right. So before we get started, um, make sure you check out the first week of a new Photoshop daily creative challenge with Howard Pinsky every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Don't miss out on this new set of challenges. Tomorrow we'll have the artist spotlight where we will highlight and hype a member of our creative community. <laughs> If you'd like to be considered for future artist spotlights, make sure you submit your Behance portfolio tomorrow by clicking the tab above chat. And if you're hanging out over on YouTube watching the stream, we'd love to see you join us over here at behance.net slash Adobe Live. We aren't reading the chat over there. So if I, you know, if there are any questions over there, I'm not gonna see them. I can't relay them to Mike. So come join us over here to ask them here. Uh, and if you miss any of the other streams this week, you can watch all the replays right here on Behance. Adobe Live also is now hosting live streamers on Behance when Adobe's offline. So definitely tune into their streams as well and check out their creative process. I see that the chat is very excited to have you today. It is going crazy. Oh, nice. I, yeah. And I see, uh, I'm looking to see if some of our Creative South families in here and I'm yeah, sure yeah. they'll show up if they aren't, if they are say hi -o. Um, We got Chris Cannon going, Mike Jones. Oh, no. Wade's here. We've got Paco in chat. Um, What's up? Kara Butler, Steve. Hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So let us know where you're tuning in from. And Mike, if you would like to introduce yourself, your work, and tell the audience what you're working on today, let's let's start. Sure. So I'm Mike Jones. I'm a designer out of Columbus, Georgia. Um, I'm creative leader at Aflac, and I do... Uh, my studio on the side called Surf Studios. I also run a conference called Creative South. And some of y'all might know about that. And today we're just going to go over um, some lettering. I, I, I thought it might be fun to kind of, uh, this is some of my work, but I thought it might be kind of fun to take a, a phrase that I'm known for, which is hug necks and, and do some kind of funky Southern uh, lettering to that kind of, kind of Coke vibe it up or, you know, vintage soda logo it up a little bit, but um, uh, hug necks comes from something my grandmother used to say to me when we would go to her house. And it's, it's just, it, that's my way of greeting people. I'm, I'm a ginormous guy and I love to hug people. And so when I hug people, I usually get them around the neck because I'm so tall. So hug necks, it's just that Southern welcome. So that's kind of what I thought we'd do today. We would get in a uh, fresco and kind of sketch it up. And then tomorrow we'll, we'll get an illustrator and and vector that mess up so that's that's what's up a fun fact about mike too is mike gives the absolute best hugs i try yeah the first time i met mike like there was no handshake <laughs> it was an immediate like bear hug I, envelope you know, of me it, and you know so i look forward to my mike jones hug every year and i haven't had so. it in two years so like i'm really hoping we can we can it's make coming. this happen it's coming back coming back in april let's do this so yes. now what well let's switch over to fresco <laughs> right <up. laughs> yeah so okay. some of your work uh let's pop into fresco let's see your process awesome. I, so, you're gonna use the vintage pepsi coca-cola logo yeah i just have those on my artboard to kind of and I, I locked them in separate layers just so i could have reference of kind of like what those letter forms already look like and so i'm gonna uh take the ruler tool and draw some some rulers across to kind of give myself uh some some baseline to go by and, and so he, you click and this you bottom right and, hand i was gonna say if you tap and hold the ruler button at the bottom too i think you should get different shapes oh yeah look at that ha. yeah so you'll be able to do like a badge and circles and stuff fun fact cool. keep on <laughs> fun fact and so uh, you just put the ruler up here and keep it uh horizontal and then just pull a line and it does all the work for you then you move the ruler you know pull another line we might use that again i put that on a separate layer i'm just going to lock those down by tapping layer and hitting lock layer 
And then the tool I'm just going to be in for the most of this is because I'm just sketching is um, up here in the top left hand corner. You just click that and it's on sketching already, but you can just come down to all the pixel brushes that are listed, click sketching. And I like the pencil, so I'm just going to leave the base pencil that it's already there. And I've chosen black as my colorway. Um, and I probably will let's see. No more. Yeah, I'll just leave it like it is. So anyway, usually what I do when I get started on something like this is, is typically I just, um, oh, sorry. Let me add a new layer in here. Yeah, my bad. Okay. Is I just kind of write what I'm trying to, uh, you know, what I'm going to be scripting out, I guess. So I can have a reminder. If it, not that it's complicated, but that's just me because it could be multiple words sometimes. And then I'm going to look at, at the Coke and the Pepsi and kind of see where I want to take it. There's all these great flourishes they have from those time periods that are timeless, I think. And so um, because Coke is from Columbus, Georgia, don't let those folks in Atlanta tell you otherwise. Is it really? Uh, it, yeah. He, Pemberton founded it down here and then took it up to Atlanta. They will argue oh, that so left funny. and right. But um, yeah, his actually a there's a historic, there's a historic, the house that he lived in when he created the formula is right down the street from the Springer. So oh. you can always go down there and take a tour. Yeah. It's got like, like oh, one sweet. of the historic markers out front. I'm going to have to look for so, that next time we're in Columbus. Yeah, do do that. Yeah, come come check it out. Um, I want to play off the first C, right? So Because I think we could take that and make, uh, you know, I think you could pull that as making an H out of it, right? So, like, I'm going to be real loose with these sketches. So you could do the same thing. It's not necessary to, to really uh, make it formal yet. I'm just trying to get a rough idea of where I could go with it. Uh even maybe take the the curve here, you know. Like I said, I'm just pulling. I'm pulling from right here, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But then I also want to think, well, what what would the other side look like, you know? Because if I'm gonna make that into an H, you know, well maybe it'll go back here like this. Uh, maybe this side will curve back in like that. Yeah, it kind of looks this like where you can have from like the Pepsi P. You could, you definitely could pull the backside like that. I mean, I, I see that if you wanted to combine the two together, I guess it would work to, to you know, go ahead and pull a, you know, a little hook there. I don't know. I, I, at this point, you really and truly, when you're when you're doing this kind of stuff, you just play it by ear. Kind of, kind of get what you like. Uh, you got to figure out a way to make the H crossbar make sense with this type of, uh, this type of look, you know, and do I want it to carry, carry through, you know, over to here to the U probably, I don't know. I always come back and figure that out at the end. So then I'm going to, you know, I noticed that like most of the letters are, or most of the, the letters here are real thin. So try to keep those kind of narrow. And it's, you know, fat, fat on the left side and thin on the right side. So there's some books I'm going to have to show you at some point, Mike, that I've got from Hamilton Wood Type Co., I believe. Oh, yeah. Let me see them. Yeah, they're uh, in a they're based in Wisconsin and um, they've got uh, all these like vintage like reproduction books with all yeah. this like vintage type and you would probably like go nuts for it and i love that stuff I, I don't claim to be like you know a type guy by any means like i it's not like i don't i just there's something soothing about sitting here just drawing letters that I, it's hard to explain i i enjoy it but i don't claim to be like that's my only niche you know what i mean oh i get it i just enjoy it, is, it. it's it's really relaxing though to just kind of like let your brain, you know, it, it's let free go form. Of it. like, all day. It's free form. And yeah. so like the, the 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 kicker on this particular piece is gonna be, you know, here. How does that mm -hmm. tie in down in a minute? But for now, we're just gonna kind of plug in where the letters should go. And uh, probably for me, I'll probably come in on this ruler layer um again and unlock it and pull this up here and go ahead and, and pull me a, a nice, just a thin little line there. 
and probably one here at the base too, just so I know where those, those are. I'll come back and lock that layer back down and then go back to my, go back to it. That way everything's kind of on a nice flush uh, and they're even, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I always write hug nets with, uh, with a capital N to differentiate the two words, even though I don't put a space in between the, the word. So now we're going to try to figure out how, how do we make an N out of nothing? <laughs> And it, it doesn't really have to be out of nothing, but uh, it has to feel like it belongs. So it's kind of tricky. So, yeah. but I think, I think, you know, keeping something like this and I probably won't push this particular letter down mm -hmm. all the way to the baseline. And the reason being is because if you're if, like the Coca-Cola logo is like weird because there's one there and there's one here, right? Mm -hmm. got the two different ones so like that was my thought is i just do them in reverse i put one here and i put one up here does that make sense makes sense to me okay okay it doesn't make sense to everybody else we can certainly uh, ask chat we'll we'll, we'll hope we'll hope right um, exactly there's a rule with like typography too where there's you only need like a few certain letters and then you can build the rest of the alphabet around those letters. Isn't that the truth though? That's, that's such the mm -hmm. truth. So for the life of me, I can't I, remember what they are, but there is that rule. <laughs> I, I feel like it's like, it's like your comments, like, O H, uh, what else? C. Yeah. C like maybe those, those are three of them. I know for sure. Past that. I don't know. Or maybe V, V and A. I don't know. Oh, there are a certain set. What characters are good to start with? Here we go. I'm gonna find out. That's a good, a good, okay. uh, um, that's a good to find out for sure. So the basic ones are lowercase N, lowercase B, lowercase O, lowercase V. Really? And then A, H, and O. Those okay. are good ones to start off with. Um, someone says R, S, and O for upper and lower. And then for lowercase G and F are good to start with because R will give you a good uh, start for where serifs are going to go. And it also helps with T, X, and A. And a good beginning for the B. S was a good start to B. O gives you Q, C, G, D. Lowercase really? G lets you know what the descenders will look like and f Let's allows take... you to see the relationship between the main part of the letter and its ascender and then after that you should do like m that's crazy yeah it, I know, so like, much so many rules go into building uh, a font yeah well, and then you have of course like the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog which includes all 26 letters of the alphabet it's wild The chat's talking about the Chupa Chups logo. Logo, you know those lollipops, Chupa Chups. I um, do not know that. Is that a? Oh, I'm help, pretty help sure. It's, I know that they are in Russia because Evgeny Plashenko did a really weird commercial for them years ago. Um, but it's a lollipop, and it's got this like Pepsi Cola looking logo called Chupa Chups. Oh no! And way. apparently, it was designed by Salvador Dali. What? Yeah, I did not know that. I, I learned. I did a not thing. know that either. We're, yeah, we're, just, we're on this. We're just learning today. Yeah. Ah, Jen Hood's here. Hey, how's it going? And Amy Lyons is here. Hey. Uh, let's see who else is here. Yeah, Christy says I loved the typography class I had. See. And we actually had a question early on. Um, you would like to know where do you get where did you get your inspiration to become an artist? Oh wow, I've been. I, I mean, honest, honestly, I've been drawing as long as I could eat crayons. So it's just always been something I've been into um, ever since I was a little kid. Um, I would I would go to my grandmother's house. Obviously, I spent a lot of time there. She was awesome. And um, we would, you know, some days he would just be sitting in the floor while she's watching her stories and Wheel of Fortune and all that. And I just had those fat Crayolas, you know, the fat ones uh, that come in the box of eight. 
mm-hmm. that are the size of your finger. And yeah. I would just recreate Disney characters. I would draw like Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse and like all these things for my grandmother. I would just look at stuff and draw them and she would hang them. We put them on like little little note cards and she would hang them on her fridge. And I just remember doing that as a kid and always enjoying drawing and, and being into art. So I just, uh, I kept doing that all through high school. And when it was time to like go to college and figure out life, my dad was like, nope, you're going into sales. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> that sounds boring. I love you, but pass. I'm going to be an artist. He was like, and then what? And I'm like, I don't know. I'll figure it out. And it, you know, and then I found out what graphic design was and just fell in love with it. And over the years, yeah. I've just kind of uh, find found what like really works best for me and what I enjoy doing the most. And I try to try to do as much of that as I can. Um, if that if that answers your question. Yeah, that's a that's great. I think I think every parent gets that same reaction where you're, for when you say like I'm going to be an artist, and they're like, "Okay, what you going to do with that?" Yeah, and, and then and then how are you going to live? Yeah, like when right. I told my parents I wanted I was going to be an artist, my mom was like picturing me on the side of a New York street, like selling my art on the corner. And she was like, so you're going to be a little starving artist. And I was like, no, yeah. no, we'll figure it out. And my dad was like, try graphic design. I almost went into that. Oh, no and way. Yeah. He, he had plans to do that. And then he went into dentistry. Um, That's a jump. It's a very big jump, but he's, it, he's a very artistic person and he's very aesthetic. So he's yeah. really good at like, anything like with the teeth like making them like look really nice really straight like cleaning up the the, like gums all that he's very good very good like yeah i i get to see a lot of his like before and afters because his camera has a weird dot on it so i always have to photoshop out the weird dot (laughs) that is uh if anyone needs a good dentist (laughs) shauna's dad is your man um so real quick, I, I tend to have this like quirky S thing that I, I always like to just bring my S out and back up. I, this is something I've been doing for a while. So I kind of kept that as my style of S. Um, I try to pull the L into the K, you know, from, from the Coke logo. So that's kind of gives that loop. And then with the N and in the, in the secondary S, um, and I left a space underneath the next on purpose. But, you know, I want to I start adding some of those elements from Coke, right? we want to loop it you know could could we come up a little higher here and and loop this back through you know just like the coke logo oh sure sure we go nope wrong (laughs) my arms are ginormous it happened um it's the worst you're like when you're a large that at all (laughs) when you're a large person and your arm touches all of the menu here's what happens it's random the worst is when you like accidentally move your hand on the whole canvas shifts you're like i what happened (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah and left-handed and everything's on this side oh yeah 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 Yeah. because i'm left-handed so um so anyway we could just bring this up a little higher and and go ahead and and hit that loop like you would on like coke has on theirs and then just go ahead and bring it back through the k and uh give the same treatment if you want um and again i'm just pulling the coke logo because i like it it's timeless and it's been around for a long long time and uh, uh, something like that. That needs a lot of love, but you get the idea. And then obviously, <clears throat> we need to come back here and and do we you know, clean up this part of the end? I don't know. And then, then the fun part begins. It's like, all right, how do we how do we make this? Because really, what I want to do is bring this over here like that. Right. Like if I'm really kind of emulating Coke's old school vibe, I want to bring that here. Right. And so there's that you can kind of see where I pulled the C into the to the H. And yeah. then you apparently can move the toolbar to the other side. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, if I do that, I'm going to be all over the place. <laughs> That's going to be fair. a wild ride for me. But, yeah. you know, anyway. I lost yeah. my train of thought, but it's Sorry. good. It's cool. No, no. I, the, the problem is how do, you, how do you make this G work now? Right. Like, so it still feels like it's supposed to be there. Uh, and so I'm, hmm. I'm open for suggestions on that. <laughs> and I'm thinking. Cause you want it to work with that, like nice swoop from the H. 
Yeah, and I'm not 100% sold on this in anyway, but... I'm going to grab my uh, sketch pad. You, and could, I'm gonna you just... could bring it. John just Krause like... is here. He says hi. Hey, what's up, Krause? Hey, look. Look, Krause. Pepsi. Just for you, man. Pepsi <laughs> goes... He's like... Oh, look at that Pepsi Cola logo. Pepsi's uh -huh. way better. Oh, brother. You, uh uh. Mm -mm. Let's not get that debate started because, you know, you know that's. I used a to long like. Time uh, debate. I used to like Coke Zero. Like, that was my go to. And then they changed the yeah. formula to Coke Zero yeah. because they're like, we want it to taste more like Coca Cola. And I was like, I, I drink Coke Zero because it doesn't taste like Coca Cola. There you and go. And they changed it and I haven't drank it since. Here you go. Here you go, Kraus. <laughs> or, or <laughs> now we're talking. If we're going to get into sodas, let's go with either one of those. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sold on the, the H either. Like it's, it's there, but it's, I don't know. It's not, it's not my favorite yet. Um, I, I'm interested to see what the chat thinks. What's the chat think we should do to to kind of? Yeah, if chat has, edit, has edit uh, it up. suggestions. Let's hear the suggestions. Also, um, you know, just like with any pencil, if you never use the sketch the sketch function in this software, uh, you know, it's light. You know, the more pressure you put, just like anything, it's going to make a darker line. So just what? So I know the idea was to have the H reflect the C, but I don't you're I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. But what if you did that swoopy swoop on the G instead? Ah, okay, okay. So maybe if, if anyone in chat wants to be able to see that, ta-da. Maybe maybe bring this to here. Yeah. More like that. Because then maybe, because then it might balance it nicely too, because that G can balance the N. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Um, let's see. Paula Zimmerman says maybe make more pointy tips on the H instead of curly Qs. Kara says, can you just make the H tail stop right before the G tail so they don't overlap? Um, Barbara says, I think you're 200% right on. I think what we're doing now is what, what they're referring to. Amy says, I was thinking that too with the G. Uh, and John Cross says, hashtag swoopy swoop is now a thing. Mm, see, come, oh. That's actual typography terms. What would be really fun is when you render this out, if you've got the the lettering like chain stitched on a on a jean jacket and you like rolled into Creative South with it on your back. <laughs> Do you know how much material that is? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, parachute company. Um, yes, but but I could definitely be could kind to yourself. Man. I love it, dude. Hey. I'm I'm real. I know I'm a big yeah. old dude. That's a big old coat. But it could be cool. It could be cool. You could make a cool I, patch too. Like a stick on patch. I feel like the G the, the here's my dilemma with the G is to keep it to keep the all right, you know, the C goes like this, right? This mm -hmm. is the fun part about sketching too. Like I don't know how many people are in their sketchbooks every day, but I literally have uh 47 of these that are full. Right, because I I go through about two or three a year. Yeah, look and, at that shiny holographic Creative South sticker. Um, but I sketch everything before I start in Illustrator, um, and that's just my process. It works for me. I think it's important to kind of visualize where things need to go and how to you know how they could work, and it's always easier on um, pencil and paper for sure, or if you have an iPad to be in your iPad to really make it work. Um. I like the way that it came down and went back up like the regular coat, right? Like we had that vibe. And the G is really needs to 
Like you could do it like that. Uh, let me let me erase this real quick. <laughs> Wade says we're asking for proof that this is live over on YouTube because the date in the untitled document, save please, is not today's date. <laughs> Oh wow, it's not. That's weird. Yeah. Also say we... Oh, yeah, probably should do that. Yeah. Um, also, fun fact though, Fresco does autosave as you go. So like if anything happens, it does manage to pick up pretty much almost where you left off, if not exactly where you left off. So how do you I wonder why the date's off? That's so weird. Good catch. Is, I wonder if your iPad. I didn't even notice that. It probably is like my iPads in the past. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. It's a good question. No. Uh, welcome to Adobe Live, where we time travel. Um, <laughs> Don't you know? Don't you know? Um, Don't you know? Let's see. Yeah, Amy says, I was watching it over on YouTube for a bit. Just a reminder, guys, if you are watching on YouTube, um, with the exception of what Wade said, we actually don't see any of the comments over on YouTube. Like, I'm watching the Behance chat, so, like, join us over here on behance.net slash Adobe Live, because I'd love to I'd love to be able to relay your questions to Mike and, like, have fun yes. chat time. Fun chat time. Manuel says, Fresco on the iPads, my sketchbook at this point. Same. Not as soon as I got an iPad. Yeah, I used to keep sketchbooks like crazy. And then once I got an iPad, I only draw like on the iPad now. I I still keep my books. I, I have them both, but I still mm -hmm. keep my books. I still That's have just me. sketchbooks. I just don't <laughs> use them. But I keep them with me and they travel with me. So in theory... They're there. Oh. <laughs> so maybe if we just kind of give this H kind of a, a point here, so it feels like it still goes like that. Does that make sense? Repeat that. So even though it's even though it's connected to the G right now, to give that nice loop through, we still have that the same flow right there, like the C used to have. Yeah, I think that I'll works nicely. Yeah. yeah. So then my thought with this is, you know, obviously you kind of you kind of got uh, the the rough part down, and then I'll come in here now and I'll start like refining everything and the way it, the way it connects and the way it looks and the thins and thicks, and I still stay in sketch for that, um, just because I like to get as much as I can get done um, in this phase before I move on. Especially for me, I do this with clients too, as I'll, um, I, I make sure that the sketch phase is our main way of getting to the next, to, to the build. Like I, I don't do a three builds and then, Hey, pick one of the three to, to move on. I'm like, Hey, here's 150 sketches. Let's narrow that down. Here's the top three out of that, that I've chosen for you. Let's narrow this down to like the one main thing, because typically what I draw ends up being, you know, as close to, to final as is I can make it. So um, sketch as much as you can. Uh, there, was a, there was a conversation I saw on Twitter the other day, I think from John Hendricks, um, who's a very inc incredible, talented illustrator. And he said that the sketches that he sends off to his clients are pretty much like what the final is going to look like. Because sending things that are like very rough, where like, you know what it is, the client may not always know. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cheryl would like to know, do you sketch daily or only when an idea pops up? Oh, no, I, I sit here with, I've got my sketchbook and my iPad next to me, wherever I'm at, like, really, wherever I go, I've got them with me. So if something comes up, like it's beside my nightstand. Like if I, you know, wake up and I dream something cool or whatever, I'm like trying to, I'm trying to take notes in or kind of rub rough sketch it. But if I'm on a call or a meeting and I'm taking notes or, or I'm listening to a something, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always got, for some reason, it just helps me remember what I'm doing if I'm, I'm in my sketchbook. So 
I, I sketch all the time, as much as I possibly can. Norse says they sketch on envelopes or paper bags. Yes, or napkins, or toilet paper, or paper towel, or like you get one of these, you know, you get something in the mail and you're like, oh, I'm not going to use that envelope or I don't know. Whatever's on my desk, if it doesn't have anything on it, it's going to get drawn on. Or like, you know, your, your, your doctor writes you. Oh, that's too good. And Stoney says, yeah, you can really freak someone out with your rough sketch. Yeah, there's, I find with, with clients, it's like you have to, you have to show them like as close as possible to what they're expecting to see because, and you can't show sketches in color because they're like, I didn't want purple. And I'm like, I just drew in purple. Just ignore yeah. that. The pen is what I found. Um, it's the only one I had on my desk. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Um, Erica says that she used to draw on the back of paper menus at restaurants as a kid and now draws on envelopes and small stuff at work. Nice. And Paula would like to know, where did you go to art school? I am a proud graduate of the University of West Georgia. I have a BFA in graphic design and ceramics. Yay. I didn't know you did ceramics. Yeah, man. I actually did. I actually got all the way to graduate level ceramics in undergrad because it was my stress reliever at night. Yeah. I would, um, I would go, um, sling that clay. <laughs> just, I would just literally, I would just go up there and take the stress off. I'd go up there and make some pots at night. It would, you know, and just, uh, de-stress from that. So. Uh, oh, that's so cool. I did not know that about you. Yeah. Round us. Craziness, huh? That's such a fun, like, little factoid, though. You wouldn't think that I would do that kind of stuff, but I did. Yeah, I did. It was, it was, it was good times. I got my minor just because I took so many additional art classes in addition to my graphic design classes that I had no overlap. Wow. So they're nice. just like. Yeah, they they established a paint. It was a combo painting, drawing, printmaking minor because we fought for it because there was no like screen printing minor. Right. Um, so the school bundled it together. And so I decided to go and see if I could declare it. And they're like, well, we don't recommend if you have an art major to declare an art minor. And I said, just just humor me, like yeah. pop it just in there and see what I would what else I would need to take. So I still had like a semester and a summer left. And yeah. the, the advisor pulls it up and she does it. She goes, oh, you just need one more history class. And it oh. looks like you're you're already signed up for one this summer. And then the one that you have to do in the fall that you're already signed up for. And I said, all right, I'd like to declare it. That's awesome. I didn't know you could even do that. Yeah, they like they said, they don't they didn't normally at my at my college. They didn't recommend it because the classes overlap. So like you'd end up having to take more in order to declare it. But I had hours I had to fill to keep my scholarship. So I, and I'd already finished all my gen eds and you could only take so many design classes because you could only get in, you can only get in based on like, you know, what spots were left and generally the upperclassmen grabbed them first. Um, so it was like maybe two to three classes a semester in graphic design. And then I'd take an additional two fine arts courses. That's wild. Right. And it I'm worked. going to, where'd you go to school? I went to the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dope. I think yeah. we actually played you guys in football. We didn't have a football team. Well, maybe it was, hold on. UF has a football team. That's who I'm we, thinking of. Yeah, we have basketball. We Maybe we played y'all in basketball then. Because I, I, I remember those letters for some reason. Yeah. I feel UNF, like we were in the, we were in the same, uh, conference for a while yeah i, don't know, I have to go I, back and look but yeah i know we had we had basketball and then we joked that we had an undefeated football team because we had no football team and well, then there was there was briefly a hockey team that they tried to start <laughs> didn't didn't nice. end up panning out but they did try to did, start a hockey did team. not go didn't go well huh they just didn't have enough dudes in the, <laughs> in the northern florida to play hockey Plus, you had to go off campus. And it was like a twenty-minute drive on on I ninety-five, so Holy it wasn't wonderful. wasn't convenient. 
So, um, let's see. All right. We had a, Cheryl says, being a lefty, did you have any problems with spiral bound notebooks? Oh yeah. Yeah. Me and spiral bound. That's why all my sketchbooks are hard bound. Cause I need stuff to lay flat. I always hated those in school. Getting the spiral bound, it was a requirement because it would. I would have to. My hand would always have to sit on that or hit Maybe it or whatever. Yeah, indents. it's it's not fun. Not fun. All right, what do you guys think about that version? Does that look okay? Oh, I like that. Chat. Now, are you? Did you align break bread with the very tail of the S? Is that what's what it, you're? It's, it's super close. It, it will be when I'm like when I vector it. It will be. Okay. And. Let me see if I can hide this layer. Yeah, so there's that. I, I do like that ampersand. Yeah, those are fun to draw. I can't so, do the traditional, like the one that looks like a weird eight treble clef thing. I can't do that style of ampersand. It, it always looks, you know how I remember that? You know how I remember that? Hmm. It is like for some reason, it's something similar to that. It's not right, but this shape. Yeah. That's always, a tra- rem- always it's- like looks like a duck to me. <laughs> yeah. It's- anyway, it's similar to that. I think it like, yeah, I like it looks I, like it's a, like it's that. A, I think. Yeah. Like I always end up drawing like it like a treble clef, which is not, not correct. I'm there <laughs> trying to yeah. align it with the, view you know, there. yes. Yeah. Yes. I was at, I was in music at one point and like, so my brain automatically tries to draw that, that fancy ampersand as a, as a treble clef and it, that's not it. Um, uh, let's see if I can do this. Paula right. would like to know if you still sling pots. I'm you know what? I, I can, I haven't done it in years, but when you sit down on a wheel and you center that clay, it's like all of it comes rushing back and you're like, yep, I got this. Boop. Coffee mug. Boop. Bowl, another bowl, vase, and then you're like, okay, it's time to go. But I, I, I want to. I, I need to get back in there. There's an awesome studio over at Britt David here that you can join as a membership. But with everything I got going on with kids and yeah, one day, one day when I retire, maybe I'll go back over there and throw some more pots. But I do miss it. It was a lot of fun and definitely a stress relief. Say hey, real should... quick, I mean, go ahead. I was gonna say you should you should make a table at Creative South and like sell your pots and wares. Oh, a pots and wares table. That would be cool. Get an original Mike Jones. Hey, you know what? Maybe I'll have some for sale. You never you never know. You never know. You never know. Maybe I'll get I'll get uh I'll, I'll have enough time to get a few made before April. There you go. So this is this is where I'm at with the sketch. I think this looks pretty good. Obviously, we can clean it up and do some things. And you always will tweak stuff when you're in vector. But I like to take this and really try to go over it again um, to just kind of get my lines kind of where I want them. And also to kind of how I would vector it, if that makes sense. And so what I mean by that is like, like I know that this is going to be one like piece of the puzzle, right? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And so I'll draw that in Illustrator and then I'll duplicate it and make the U is probably okay. how it'll work out. So you right? draw it and out so as the shapes that you would vector. I, sometimes, sometimes. If I don't color it in first, yeah. Or if I was going to keep it real rough and, and, and even more vintage looking, I probably would just kind of start filling this in nice and like start really drawing it in and leave it mm-hmm. rough and use it like that. But not knowing what direction I'm going to take it in just yet. Uh, I'm just saying uh, I like to kind of go back over and kind of just see where things are going to hit. Yeah. Christy Lee says, my graphic design school just closed, and that's why they're on Adobe Live so much, because they need to learn all the tricks without actually going to school. Oh, wow. That's really you using did. your resources. Yeah. Honestly, like if we had this when I was in school, I feel like I would have learned oh, a lot. I would have been 10 times better than I was than I am now. Same. Like when I was in school, I have, I've had this conversation on it with other artists before too. Like when like talking about like what resources we had in school and like back then, like if you had if you were able to get your hands on a Cintiq, like it was incredible, but that was near impossible because they were like five thousand dollars. 
and the 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 blogs and stuff that were out at the time were like Swiss Miss and oh man yeah wow Ob- Obdizito I think yeah 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 and then That's if you cool. wanted to take so awesome. Yeah, and then if you want to do, you could do tutorials from magazines to learn things. But generally, like, the, it it was a lot more limited on what you could learn and what you could find. And nowadays, you've got Skillshare, you've got Domestica, you've got Adobe Live, you've got, um, you've got Adobe Max, you've got Workshops Live, you've got Workshops Online, like, you have YouTube, like, all these all these resources um, that that were not around even ten years ago. Um, Kevin would like to know how hard do you find it to come up with a lettering style different from your own writing? They always feel like they're limited due to having a semi-sloppy handwriting style. Oh, that's a great question, man. Because I feel like no matter what I do these letters are my letters, you know, like Mm -hmm. uh, you you kind of base off of what you already know how to, the way you already typically write or script. I think the, the easiest thing to say about that is, okay. I don't, don't think of the letters so much as the letters that you're drawing is much, much more like take a step back, like look, look back from it and go, these are just a bunch of shapes, right? Like I'm just creating shapes. Don't think of it so much like this has to look like a G it doesn't. It, 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 it has to function as a G when you read it and, and when you pull back from, but like, think of it as like, I'm just drawing these shapes when you're in them, when you're in it, if that makes any sense, I, it might not, but like, instead of the, me looking at like, I'm drawing an N or an E, like, I'm just like, okay, I just need these curves to be fatter and this curve to be skinnier. And like, I'm making this loopy shape and, you know, the more I find it, the more it looks like an E or the more I find it, the more it looks like an N, but it doesn't not necessarily have to be that letter to begin with, especially like you said, if you have sloppy handwriting, um, you know, I, I have like my dad's weird half, you know, it's like half cap letters, half lowercase, half, half cursive kind of mess that I've just picked up over the years when I'm actually writing. And it's probably Mm -hmm. a hot miss, but when I'm thinking about making some kind of like type type mark, um, you know, out of script, I'm not really concerned about is the U a U so much as is is are these shape are these the shapes that I'm trying to get out of it if if I'm making yeah I don't know no that, that makes resonates that makes a ton of or sense if, I'm, I if say, I'm explaining it correctly or not yeah no you're you are it's and I would say like think about it less like handwriting and more like illustration yeah you know you're you're uh, just drawing the shapes um because it you know my normal handwriting is is literally like. You know, we have, I think we have similar handwriting because you know I, I mean? do a lot of that, like up, down, very, very up, yes, yes. scribble. <laughs> and, you know, and then, you know, when you're, when you're, even when you're doing your cursive, it's, it's, hot, you know, it's a hot mess. Yeah. But that doesn't have to translate to what I'm doing above. above. Like, I know what, it, what the letters should look like when they're done. And Cheryl really says, and truly, I, I would probably color these in. Yeah. Cheryl says, um, did you say these labs are recording and can we see them again and again, et cetera? Yes. All these. Ad- uh oh. Did we lost Shauna. I think we lost Shauna. Oh, okay. Am I back? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, so real quick, uh, Bob Ewing taught me this tip, and I'm going to show you guys this in in, um, in Illustrator tomorrow when I'm vectoring this piece. But real quick, I know this is, this is so really bad when you zoom in on it because my pen works all over the place today. But when you're doing a, like a like this particular letter form right here, like this, you want to come down instead of like ending it here and coming back this way. If you'll 
come into the letter with your points and then come back up and then back, you can adjust that curve now without making it, uh, without having to do it a whole lot more work. And I'll show you all that tomorrow when we start to vector this. Um, and then I'll probably cut this off up in here somewhere and just draw that curvy part of the S. Uh, if that makes sense. And I'm sure a lot of y'all are going, well, why aren't you just using a, um, why don't you just use a brush pen and do this? Yeah, totally could. Totally could. Um, but I find that just doing my basic sketching and really like laying out the way I want the letters to look, I have a little more control over it. Um, sometimes, uh, especially on an iPad, uh, brush pens can, can get away from you real quick and you're doing a lot more erasing than you are writing. So I, this is just a technique that I use. If you have a better technique, by all means, uh, use your technique. It's you know not gonna hurt my feelings. You need to use what works for you the best anyway. But um, this is just what works for me, so. Um. And in uh, Illustrator on the iPad too, you can, the way they have it now is like you can paint it, like paint quote unquote, and it will make all of your points. So you can do like lettering easier, I guess, is a good way to put it. Sure. It's really interesting to see. People in chat are talking about how doctor handwriting is like chicken scratch and they're comparing their lettering or their handwriting to like doctor scratch. And I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. My dad has that, you know, he's, he's a dentist. He's got that really chicken scratchy um, handwriting and over 33 years, I have learned how to read it and how to decipher it. Yeah. But he also has incredible cursive. And I didn't know this until high school. So oh, nice. I have a, another question when she comes back. So yeah, no problem. No. So that's where Santa comes from. Santa's handwriting came from. <laughs> that's like. No, it's, it's like where she cut off and then she picks back up and was like, and that's where uh, Santa's handwriting comes from. <laughs> and you'll never know. Like no one knows it's, where Santa's handwriting comes from. I'm sorry about the freezing, y'all. Normally I can no, I just see think it's it happens. It was a great, a great <laughs> pause because it was like, come back with this like Santa's. It was funny. You had to, you had to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Good time. Well, his, yeah. His, his cursive was, he, he fooled us for a long time. So I found out in like, high school and all of a sudden I was like and that's oh so that's where Santa's handwriting came from nice that's cool really cool um I got a question for the, the chat that's what I'm thinking is I like uh, I really like the way that this is kind of still got that C vibe but I also like the G what uh, there's no rules for this but like you know could could we combine them here with like an, uh, a special notch or special you know uh, extra flourish or, or whatever to keep them combined. Like there's nothing rules that said we can't do that. I, I don't know. I might leave it. I might not. But for right now, the whole point was to make this curve of this H down here mm -hmm. um, where it still looks, even if it was a gap there, so where it still looked like it came over and made that, that uh, paid homage to that Coca-Cola C. And then other things that, that you, you can do to your letter forms to kind of keep that, uh, that kind of vintage look, if you want, is is just add add other things that aren't in there. And I mean, I'm I'm basing this off of uh, again off of Coke and some of Pepsi's. Uh, let me show this later. And let me erase my chicken scratch. Oh no! What, no, cancel. Sorry. There we go. There we go. Do 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 do. Coke doesn't have any of these things on it, but if you wanted to, you could always come in here and add um, stuff like, you know, you can come here and get, get you know, add this oh, yeah, kind of the, stuff in. The spurs. <clears throat> if you wanted, you could, you know, put them where, where they, where they fit. It might not work because it's, it's a, a, 
the way that it's set up, but you could. There's nothing, nothing says you can't do some fun things like that. Yeah. Stylistically, that would match, that matches like what you would think of in the South. Yeah. I, at the end of the day, what I want to do with this is, is I will probably end up painting this on my wall um, in my cabin just as a, a fun mural piece. Um, yeah. And make it look like when I finish it, make it look like it had been taken off an old uh, barn. Mm -hmm. and re-put back up on to the wall yeah so that's kind of the deal but um but that's the sketch for that i think we're in a good place for that how much time i got i'm good on time oh you're good we're still it's it's been not even quite an hour so you've got okay another before we awesome. have to like say goodbye no no you're good i just want to i wanted to kind of uh keep this this going and then um maybe go on to uh some other elements that I want to do. If I, if I build a badge out of this, which I'm hoping to do kind of, maybe, maybe we emulate this tomorrow mm -hmm. um, or something similar when we're done. Um, this could make a really cool, you know, those sign painted signs. Oh, or if I could get somebody to put it on metal and then we could shoot it with a gun and make <laughs> it like very County, you know, and then hang it on the wall. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding, but make it really it, like it's been it in the happen. outside for a while. Yeah. Make it happen and then figure out a way to turn it into like part of the set at Creative South. Oh, hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I know a sign guy. We can do this. Thanks for that idea. So Love let's it. figure out how do we finish it up, right? And and I think I think we'll definitely play off of this badge. So you know, in saying that. Um, let's go back down to the ruler. I always click it and then I have to wait. Click and hold. There we go. Circle. Let's do a circle badge. Let's make it bigger. Okay. Cool. And then back here. Whoop. Oh, crap. Sorry, y'all. Never apologize for your process. Just say it's no. There we go. It's just part of my process is messing up. <laughs> I'm going to put this on another layer. Um, let me lock down the, the script part of it. And then go back here. I drew, drew the circle with the ruler. And we're going to go here. So, whoa. You gotta uh goodness there, gracious yeah there's All a right. there's a trick to it and i i'm trying to think what it was because you have to like lock the layer make the circle layer. and then click outside of it i think to make the so you can't transform it here we go nope <laughs> okay one second i'm yanking out my ipad because i there, there's a way to do it. I just know it's a little, it's a little testy sometimes. Um, uh, let's see. I don't want to move anymore. Cheryl said, "What about matching the upper H curve with the left part of the upper N?" And I went to clarify because I said, "Do you mean the part where the N curves through the K?" And she goes, "No, the left part above the G and the U above the G." You're talking about okay. Let's go back to that for a second while we're trying to figure out the circle nonsense. Yeah, um, I, I will figure out the circle and I'll get back. No, to you're that. you're good. So you're saying, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, you want to match this part to this part. I mean, like take this section over here and move it over here, so you have two of them. All I right. We'll see in the chat which what she says. It's about a thirty second delay. Um, with your with your circle. So what you just have yeah. to do is you make your your circle and then just start drawing, like hit the pencil or whatever tool you're gonna use and then just start drawing on the lines. Oh. Ta-da! Yeah. Okay. I knew it was like simpler than stuff. we were making it. Uh, Cheryl says no. Um, All right, tell, tell me what you mean. Okay, matching the upper H curve with the left part of the upper n oh 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me, let's go. Let's let's explore that real quick. I think. Yeah. I think I know it. What, what she means. I'm just duplicating one layer. I'm locking my other one and turning it off. Okay. So here, and then let's go ahead and erase this part right here. And you're 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 saying. Um, basically match the tops yeah i don't know if she... so the left the left part of the upper end i take that as the like essentially you're you're getting rid of the that swirl at the top is what my understanding is on the left part of the h yeah yeah, yeah. I, I just drew her in black is that is that what she meant Let's see what let's see what she says. Cause I'm trying to figure it out as well. We're trying. Oh, you're good. I guess you could do uh, that and then the top part of the C and make the left part of the N to be reverse, maybe the right part of the H. All right, hold on. I think that is she saying, let me uh, get rid of this. Uh, let me put it back the way it was. Christy Lee says, okay. I'm learning so much with you guys. I really want to go get an iPad now and start practicing more. Do it. All right. So, nope. That's not right. <laughs> Chris Edmond says, paper is cheaper. It is. Paper is much cheaper, but the iPad is fancy. Honestly, I got an iPad after the last Creative South we had in person um, because at the time I had a Surface Pro 4 and it was like constantly overheating on me. And so I'm sitting there waiting for the thing to boot up and everyone else yanks their iPads out and they start drawing. And I'm like, well, I have envy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the, the one of the first times I ever saw you draw was was on the surface. Yeah, in the hotel got, lobby. Yeah, and I I had that thing I think for like three years, but it I also had three of them because I had to keep bringing it back to Microsoft to get them to replace it because it kept overheating on me. Um, so when I came home from Creative South, I was like, I'm gonna get an iPad. And Is she I say more like that. Possibly. Oh, hey, Colby. Colby says, I think she's talking about the right side of the H and the left side of the N. Yeah, I just fixed it like that. So they're so basically she wanted to mirror them. Yeah. It could work like that. I got I, it. Don't bother me. It still gives the old C vibe. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to have elements of the, the coca-cola brands elements where like you, the, there's a certain style of swooshes in the way it's looked so like i feel like this could work i feel like also you know seeing it now i would probably make this this side just a little bit fatter at the bottom um just because the c is like that too mm -hmm. um, and i would probably probably uh do the same over here uh just to give it a little more but again really when i start vectoring this stuff that's when all those little details you can get like real nitpicky with some of that stuff because it's a lot easier to go all right i'm gonna flip but i like i like that I like that look i like the way that it looks because that was the only um the only i don't know what what that endpoints call where you have this the circle kind of tip but you know that was the only one in the whole piece just like it's the only one in coke's logo but uh, mm -hmm. I like the I like the the reverse. I mean, I like the the flip to make a mirror. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Good. Good. And suggestion. Cheryl says yes. This is what that okay. was what she was going for. Okay. Cool. 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 We're gonna leave that one up here. Then lock that down. And go back here to um, actually let's not do that. Let's uh, unlock that real quick. Steve says uh, paper may be cheaper, but then again, there's no control Z, so maybe you go through a lot of paper fast. You know what, though? Show of hands in the chat. Not that you can. I don't know if you could do like a raise the hand deal. 
How many people have tried to undo their sketchbook? Yep. I, I literally tapped my sketchbook with two fingers trying to figure out why it's not working. I've tried to, and you're, I've and you're tried like, to pinch what? zoom. <laughs> that's when you're like, that's when I, I got to get up off of my desk. It's time to get up and walk away because I've been doing this for way too many hours. That's when you know you need a break. I One time yeah. I was I was drawing in my sketchbook and I went and hit command Z on my keyboard. And I was like, why is it not backspace? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's wow, awesome. that's, that's a that's a fail yeah everyone in chat's raising their hand and someone timothy goes never i don't believe you timothy no nope, um, lies yep. got michael campbell raising his hand got lena Gomez. what's up dude lena gonzalez raising her hand jack says i've done it more than a few times erica says way too often chris edmund says pinch zoom yes um, Biola says, I try to undo life sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, That's I, I, yeah. Anytime like I stub my toe, I'm like, can I just undo that? Can I go back like the three minutes before that happened? Oh, that's the worst pain too. Oh, it is. It's, it's like hitting your funny bone, but in your foot. Oof. The funny bone is awful. Wait, says mine's usually just wishing I could undo or just revert to a previous version. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, Eric says, you. what's Eric says, what's funny is if you're tired enough, pinch and zoom actually works. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Oh, that's fair funny i you know what it's i feel like it's just such a universal thing everyone has command z their sketchbook and wondered why it doesn't work oh yeah i know i know i have yep i feel like i need to i need to make patches or something that just say command z you should there you go create yourself mm -hmm. bring them Exactly. I don't know if I'm, I'm just giving this a quick fill in, y'all. Yeah. They have a vendor village at Creative South every year, everyone. And it's so fun because you get to see people's like amazing wares and shirts and things they sell and posters and things. And it's easy to spend way too much money in there. Um, I've done it the last few years and I just do like the honor system. So I just have a Venmo thing on my on my table. I'm like, here, just send money if you take something. But because I don't drive anymore, I don't know if I'll be doing it this year. You don't drive anymore? No, because I'm in Chicago. That's a long drive. Oh, that makes sense. That part makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I like, still I still general. drive. No, I still okay, drive. I was, no, I was like, are you on the <laughs> are you on the T, the L, whatever's up there in Chicago? I don't know what it's called. Um, no, I'm no. Um, you know what it is is. Like when I was in Orlando, it was a six hour drive and it was like, it was six hours to drive to Columbus or it was six hours to fly to Columbus and take the shuttle and get there. So I was like, well, if I drive, I have my car. So, yep. and, and that way too, I could, it was easy to do the vendor village because I could just pile all my stuff in there and then go drive straight to the, to the uh, venue and drop everything off. But without a car, it's a lot harder. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So. Hey, real quick on this, uh, if you're, it, you know, I'm zoomed in, and obviously my pencil's a lot, the 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 lead's a lot still, still as big as it was when I was zoomed out. But you can, uh, you can still just like a regular pencil if you want to turn it sideways. Ooh, it's got tilt recognition. So, yeah, so, so that's nice. pretty. That's pretty dope. The sketch feature is very good in here. I I, I like it a lot. It's, it really is very nice. And they now have adjustment layers, which is like the best thing ever. Yeah. And uh, I know the blue dot is helpful for you guys. It's interesting for me. I'm learning yeah. to get, I'm learning how to not pay attention to it. All right. So anyway, you get the idea. It's, it's colored in. It, it looks like it's like I wanted it to just kind of color it in. Um, like... So my thought with this, this particular piece is, you know, how do we, how can we add some elements in here that, uh, 
not necessarily are the same as that because you know we mm -hmm. want to put something down here but i don't necessarily need uh and break bread there because i think oh, for a bad style it would probably be too small to read yeah right could, so i feel like break bread could be the cur in the curve yeah, yeah yeah i'm with you i'm with you yeah come it could say the top the top would say come together hug next break bread and that's the fun part is starting to like how do you start planning this out right so let's yeah. use another another andrew um, hawk rattles here hey man he goes well 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 wearing my creative self shirt today oh yeah <laughs> hawk is, best, is on after yeah he hawk is on after after you today so everyone make sure you oh, stick right around on, and watch hawk Andrew's in my phone as, as Andrew Horseradish because I didn't know how to say his last name when I first met him. And he's remained Andrew Horseradish in my phone. <laughs> We're all still trying to learn how to say his last name. Mm -hmm. I just remember he said it's like hawk, like the bird, and rattle, like the baby toy. Hawk rattle. That's right. That's right. I should have worn my creative style shirt. Maybe I'll wear one tomorrow. I gotta locate them. I still have the 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 one with like Mario on it, the game one. Was that from the last CS? Uh no, man. Or was when that the was, one right before that? When was when was game? I, I'm trying to remember when games were. The one where you had the app made, that was the last one I think we were at. Was that 2019? I think so, because because Logan and Sarah, they they had it, they made it and everyone was in the audience, like yeah. just playing it during all the time. That's, I'm trying to remember the years. It's gone. It's, that's crazy. Uh, come on, go away. Um, that's crazy. So maybe we put that down here, right? Maybe we redo it and try harder. <laughs> so Jason says 2018 was the, was the, I think the game shirt. Um, and then Colby says the last creative South that we were all in person was the game theme. Cause yes. the last, cause I think one of the ones we got that super comfy uh, sweatshirt that I still wear constantly. We have, we, we've done a few of those over the years. This is really hard to do with this blue thing on little okay. stuff. I feel like all the creative styles are running together. So people are like, it was 2018, it was 2019. I was like, I don't know. It's all the same these days. Right. Uh, let's see. So we Let's put that there. We probably could have a nice ampersand right here if we wanted. I'm making this up as I go. No judgment. But you get the idea. Just kind of sketch out what you want. Maybe, maybe yeah. to fill in this gap here, you could have um Mariana's here. Let's see. Maybe we put like oh, a year here or something. I don't know. And then what else? Hmm. Is this is where you want to make something like, you know, put the city or, you know. Yeah. You know. Columbus, Georgia, Springer Opera House. And then up here, like. I will say, I remember my first Creative South was back when the welcome party was in the alley. Oh, wow. Yeah. I showed up with my friend Megan and we drove there with two other dudes, one who is her now husband. And 
we walk into the welcome party and Peter found me and welcomed me. And then like not even two minutes later, you walked up and you're like, welcome to Creative South, bear hug. And off you walked. Um, <laughs> and Lenny was up on stage jamming. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was the year we had it in the in the um, the big parking lot, like alley. Like, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That was my That's first crazy. one. It was like, and that those first few minutes were like what's what solidified me showing up for the for, for the following years. Nice. Marcel says this could be a good bottle cap design. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm just doing all the little fillers that you would normally do in here. And, and this, I don't know what I'm, I don't know if it's going to be brackets or what yet, but um, my thought here would be for this section to do, to, to do a, um, like an HK monogram. So, you know, you could, you could, HK, sorry, HN monogram, but keeping it maybe a little different letter forms just because on space. And when I'm doing this, I just kind of sketch out the two that I need and figure out a way to make them work. Boop, 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 boop. Doo, 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 doo. I don't know if I froze during the during my excitement about like someone mentioning that it would make a cool bottle cap, but I also said that could make a cool challenge coin. Oh, yes. Challenge coins are a, one of my other jams. I st one of these days I want to make one. I have yet to make a design I like enough to turn into a challenge coin. When you do, you got to hit up um, um, USDOD coins. Our what buddy from Creative South works there. What did you um, say? USDO? Yeah, USDOD coins. Okay, I'm going to write this down. It sounds like some kind of Department of Defense thing, but it's not. Okay, I wrote it down. Were they the ones that, uh, they weren't the ones that, that were passing out the, the pins last time, were they? Yes, yes. They were? That's the same guy. And uh, he did he did some good stuff for me. Oh my gosh! Come on. I have a uh, friend. Wade says, "What do you do with challenge coins after you get one?" I have a friend, um, Hydro Hydro seventy four, that he just makes oh, them for the cool. heck of it. Yeah, yeah, and I just I just like. He, he'll like randomly give me one if he sees me and so like I just I hoard them like a little like a little raccoon this is mine I don't know yes. if y'all can see that good that's awesome it turned out real well yeah um there and mine all are numbered like at the very bottom down here they're numbered but yeah I, have, I a lot of people build like a board and have them like hanging on a board oh that's real a quick. good idea <sighs> This is this this um where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yep, change the size a little bit. Um sorry. I lost my train of thought again, but I need a smaller. Smaller, smaller, smaller. There we go. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. How do I turn this blue dot off for a second? Uh, I think it is. Is that an easy fix or no? I think it's an app settings. Uh, the little. It? I think it's the the gear at the top corner. I think uh, app settings. And. Show touches. Yeah, give me yeah. one second. I just got to do this for a second. I'll, I'll bring it back in just a minute. It's just this little bit of detail here is really hard for me to to do with that thing turned on because I'm trying to clean this up. But uh, Colby says those letters are hugging necks. 
They really are. They really are. Kevin Klein says that he used challenge coins as business cards. Ooh. I think that's I a, think Hydro did that too, actually. That's a are they were they metal or wood? That's a good question. Metal, 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 man. You that's a good, I mean, a very impressive card to keep because that that's a, a lot of attention to detail. So good on you if that's the case. Ann says, how do you get the coins made? Well, um, you basically just send your art to, yeah, you just send your art to the coin maker and say, this is what I'm looking for. And they take that and they'll send you a bunch of 3D mock-ups and um, to approve. And then it just gets put in production after that. I mean, it's once you send it to them, there's not a whole lot to it other than tweaking uh, things that you did or did not like from the design you sent. Yeah. Um, I try to make my illustration for the coin as close to what I want to see come back. So uh, I, I go ahead and add all my shadowing and layer like drop layers, and I try to show depth on on the um, on on the the art file, if that makes sense. All right, almost done. All right. Well, anyway, it's a it's a nice rough HN monogram, so it'll it'll do for what I need it for. So maybe we could put that somewhere in there. I don't know. What do y'all think about that? Uh, here we go. Wade says, "Was this the coin site mentioned? U.S. D.O.D. coin? Yeah, it does look like a yep, like a military yeah, army base." <laughs> That is the site, though. Yep. That is it. That is it. What is that? They have a challenge coin that looks like a bottle opener, and it's like a oh, yeah. tiger head. What? Yeah, crazy stuff. They do patches. Oh, they do those those uh, PVC vinyl patches, too. Yeah, he does uh, lapel pins and all kinds of stuff, lanyards, um, does a lot of, a lot of things. So there's that. And I don't know, you just kind of keep adding to it, you know, things that, things that you want to see in there and you don't have to clutter it up with a ton of stuff, but you know, you can always put your little trademark short form that we all do. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All the short form stuff. Uh, something could go there if you wanted it to. And then down here, you could put, uh, I don't know, some other kind of saying like, I don't know. <laughs> I lost like that, her words. Come as, come but you friends, could put something. Leave his family. Yeah, that'll be written out correctly. But then you could put down here like, how can we rework, keep it on ice for your family and your friends? You could say something like, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. Anybody else? Got a, Erica says, what idea? if he did come as friends at the top and leave his family at the bottom? Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Cross says, put never use Comic Sans on the Never use Comic Sans. That'll be the disclaimer. I'll put that. I'll hide that somewhere for you around the edge. It'll be like this. It'll be like never use Comic Sans. And then I'll be like, that'll be House. that'll be like the edging of the coin. The, yeah, like, the edge of the coin will be will never be never use Comic Sans. So 
Oh my goodness. There's been, there's been other Adobe lives that I'm pretty sure like Voodoo Val and Alex Lazarus and them, and they talk about comic papyrus. Oh, that thing is uh, interesting. An You're going to say ugly. An interesting, <laughs> I said interesting. Let's just be clear. Yeah, it, it is interesting. There's no other way to put it. It is very interesting, and I don't think I'm here for it. Watch that all, but you get the idea. And then Marcel says, What's the beef with Comic Sans? Um, so Comic Sans is actually a useful typeface because it is easier for, I believe, people with dyslexia to read. Um, it was just one of those that, like, growing up, it was on the computer. So, like, kids in elementary school would be like, I'm going to write my paper and I'm going to write the whole thing in Comic Sans, um, which is why teachers had to put in their study guide things the the rule thing at the beginning of the year um that you have to do it in times new roman and it has to be 12 points <laughs> mariana says gotta hop off team great work mike thank you for joining hey thank us, you for mariana. being here i appreciate it i appreciate that very much So that's what I'm thinking is like, we basically. That's you know, that actually works build, out really nice. Build the type, build the type. And then build, kind of match up this badge and then color it in a certain way and see where we end up. Uh, it should be a challenge coin. One side is that on the other side, it's just your face. The, my, my avatar from Twitter or Instagram. <laughs> yeah. I can do it like that. It'd be funny. Uh, what do you guys think? What else did I do to it? Anything? Erica says, it's so pretty. It's it's getting there. I think we've come a long way and, and kind of made some some headway on what we could do with it. I also wouldn't mind doing a, um, a shape. Um, yeah, another layer. Uh, so I, you know, this shape is one of my absolute favorite bad shapes for trucker hats. So... I think it would be cool if we did a, a version of it like this. We had time uh, to try to try to pull this into a hat. Uh, thoughts on that? Maybe around the edges. Yeah. Um, Colby says nice. Stone Ace is very nice. Cheryl says I really love it. Michael Thanks, guys. says I'll take a pre pre order link, please. Um, oh, okay. Colby okay. says. Yeah, uh, Sterling says coins have two sides. What might go on the flip side? My suggestion was mm, your face. My face. Um, Colby says you could turn it into a peach. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We could do that, actually. We could do that. Let's see. Let's hide that shape. Christy says, I think it looks just like the Coca-Cola stuff. Good job. It does have Thank a you. really good, like, um, sort of looking for homage. Like I hope. Homage the the point that. is to not, I'm not trying to copy it outright. Like, I don't, you know, yeah, Coke no. is its own thing. I'm not going to use Coke colors or nothing like that. But I wanted to get the vibe because Coke has started here in my hometown, uh, I, I like the, the old vintage soda logos. A majority of them are very cool script looking things. Not all of them, but a, a, a good few. And I just think that it's got a nice Southern flair to it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that was the whole pull is like, how do we take this, this word that I say all the time that is a Southern saying and, and kind of, yeah, excuse me, draw it like it, it's just like, I think it could look. And this was just a way to, to test out, you know, an idea. It's got really I'd good energy. Like, the energy matches the Coca-Cola logo. Sure. Which if you, if you saw that out on a shirt or whatever here, it would You'd make never sense. Know. Yeah. You would just like, cool. That's part of this thing. What is that? You know, what's hug next. And then mm -hmm. I would hug you and you would know, but anyway, it's just an example of how to get, how, how to take an idea from something you like and try to apply it to something else that you you're about. And I hope, I hope I made sense with that. Um, in, in using this yeah. example. 
um, Peach wise. Michael Meal Stays says the other side could be Mike as Mario from CS a few years ago. Oh man, that was honestly out of all the openings that, that Andrew and I have done, that was my favorite. I just that love that Andrew has favorites. I, I just love that Andrew has an insane array of costumes for like every occasion. And I'm not gonna tell the guy no. If he if we can figure out a way to pull off something he's got an idea about. Man, let's let's go because he is brilliant. Uh, that's one of my one of the people in my life that always always will make me laugh, and has he just can th- the way his mind works. Mm-hmm. It, it, it it's crazy town. I don't understand it, and it's it's so much brilliance coming from that guy. So uh, I'm glad he's a part of it, and, and uh, I really value what he adds, and he's just a solid dude. If y'all don't know him. You need and you've never seen his work, or you don't know the guy we're talking about. Um, go look up. Uh, is, is it how is it? Hotch.co? Hoc, yeah. Hoch.co. H O C H dot C O. Dot C O. Yeah. Go he, check him out. He's just, just good people. And he'll be great, on right after people. us. Yeah. So stay. If, you, if you've got nothing to do, or you're working on something, you need something in the background, like check him out. Let him run in the background and, and tune into his stuff. It's, it's going to be. No doubt, killer. Yeah. Bliss says, I was watching some of Hawk's older videos, and there was one from, I think, last year where he had a whole detective outfit. Yeah, he's, he he doesn't, he doesn't, yeah. like, go halfway on anything. It is all e- or nothing. Ever. ever. Um, and, and that's, you got to love that about him. <laughs> Andrew, if you don't, if you don't know me, hang out for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what's up. And then Wade just dropped all of Hawk's uh, links in the chat. So definitely check out Hawk. He's cool. He's fun. I'm still trying to get him to do a Broadway opening, like a Broadway show style opening for CS. You never know. You You never never know. know. You never know. Like, imagine if he came out like, like chorus line style gold outfit and was like one singular sensation. (laughs) How you feel about that, Hawk? (laughs) <laughs> respond in chat if you like that idea i feel like he would be for it oh but we'd have to like we'd have i feel like it'd have to have like a, a creative south spin so like the hat is a peach on his head or it something. does but it, it'll have we yes i think that's a fantastic idea actually it would be <laughs> one of the most entertaining openings ever yeah uh let's see he goes Andrew, just, he says 2022 was supposed to be Creative South on Broadway. They say yep. neon lights are bright on Broadway. I'm not going to sing more because I'll get us. And we will, we will, hey, copyright stricken. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, Chris says, don't threaten a hawk with a good time. <laughs> And Jason says, LOL, he will do it in a heartbeat. And Kara Butler says, oh, he'll do it. He's probably already got it planned and we just don't know about it yet. Oh, I'm sure. he ha- I feel like the second Creative South ends, he like takes one day to recoup. And then he's like, all right, what's the next idea? Um, Ivan says, hi, it's interesting to know what kind of business or customer usually requires this style of design. That's a great question. <laughs> My, the way I the way I think of it is ways it can be used for for packaging for food, restaurant logos, packaging for sodas or or or, or logos for that kind of a brand of uh, of food or or drink, um, clothing. Past that, uh, you, you know what? There's. Uh, I've seen script logos on pretty much all kinds of businesses. So it, it really just uh, depends on the client's personal tastes or what they're trying to achieve with their, the, the way that their, their brand comes across, the, the vibe their brand needs to have. Um, I've seen it on different things. So uh, it's probably not the best answer, but that's how I view it is. It's, it's kind of versatile depending on the taste of the person that's paying you to do it.
uh, we had Marcel says, who is this Hawk? And I said, Hawk is Andrew Hawk Rattle, who is not only a talented designer, but also a talented streamer here on Adobe and will be on right after this stream. He's also a fantastic MC. And yes. And probably one of the best people you'll ever want to know. It's like good human being. I'm biased, but it's true. You're like, why do you, one, why do you own all this? And two, I'm glad you do. <laughs> and Kevin Klein says, how long does it take to finalize a logo or shirt? And how do you calculate the hours to the client? Or do you do a fixed price? I'm always project-based um, because uh, I seem, I feel like it, it's, it's better for me in the long run and uh, a little bit easier for the client to understand um, in the beginning. So I just like, Hey, this is what the price is. And, you know, I, I quote out what I think is fair based off of how long I know it takes me to do the project. And um, then I work within that budget. You know, I'm going to make sure that, okay, I know that it's going to take me this many hours. Let me try to do it in less than that and still have the same quality. So I'm making more, you know, so yeah. I, I try to do project-based pricing um depending on and i think it even goes like one step further like value-based pricing depending on size of the client use case there's so many factors involved in in, in pricing it out but uh, for me uh that's how i do it well and, and hourly hourly ends up punishing efficiency yeah yeah so it yeah, may it you know, the better you get at your craft, it may take you what used to take you, example, 10 hours now takes you five. Just because it takes you less time doesn't mean you should make less money. Nope. And Cheryl says, what happens if the if the client constantly makes changes? Then you do a scope creep kind of thing and you say, hey, we need to go back and talk about the scope because you want to. You wanted this and I've delivered that. And now you want to keep coming back and coming back, and coming back. So now let's re let's go back over what you really need and change the pricing to reflect that. Um, especially if, if they're, if they're just making change, a few changes. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. we're, we're done after like a few, but if it's just constant, you say, Hey, look, we're going to need to go back to this. And you just got to be very forward and upfront about it and, and, and direct and and if they start adding things especially if they start adding things and hey this is not what we agreed on let's start over with mm -hmm. a new contract and a new proposal and a new price point and we'll finish this section out and we'll get paid for that and then we'll start this new part over here and we'll get paid for that and, and price mm -hmm. them separately is that makes sense yeah. and i think and generally in your contract you will state you get you know three rounds of revisions and any additional changes on that does incur an additional fee. And I always tell like I always tell people like it incurs additional fee. Um, at that point, you can you can say it's an hourly fee with a minimum of one hour charged. And if it's takes more than an hour, it's it, that hour rounded up to the nearest full hour. So if it takes you an hour thirty, it's a two hour charge. Jason says, I charge per project for most things, unless it's for revisions beyond scope, then it's an hourly basis or reevaluate the scope and total project cost. Krauss says, give a limit to revisions. Um, yeah, people are saying like, make sure you give a limit. <laughs> and then people are saying, I'll look into value-based pricing. It's, it's definitely like, in certain instances, like you, you can do hourly, but our, like I said, hourly punishes efficiency. So it's a lot easier to say, like, for example, like logo packaging, like for this amount of money, you get X, Y, and Z for this amount of money, you get X, Y, Z plus ABC for this amount of money, you get the whole alphabet. Like it's, and then you can kind of work it within like what their budget is. So they may able, you know, maybe they, maybe their budget's only for X, Y, Z let's see what we can accomplish in this. This is what I can offer for this. Yep. That's a great point. <coughs> Excuse me. And 
Chris oh, brought up a, a good, uh, you're right there. Yeah, I'm good. Sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, Chris says also make sure you communicate when the client has reached the edge of the scope of work so that they're aware, um, and then work yep. with them to adjust the pricing. So it's fair. And yeah. Jason says that he does a minimum of three hours on hourly revisions and bill in 15 minute chunks. All right. And don't, don't be afraid to go to them and say that. Like I know a lot of, a lot of people who are just starting out are kind of, kind of timid to, to go, well, you know, it, this is what's happening. No, you got to own it. Go to that person and say, Hey, just want to let y'all know what's going on. Like, don't be afraid to talk to them. Mm -hmm. How about that for the peach version? Ooh, I like, I know it's a lot going on and this is just us sketching it out, but yeah, you know, this is just us still getting our ideas out on paper. And I mean, honestly, like when you're not, when it, the, yeah, the sky is the limit in this case. You oh know, yeah. Because right now, the fun part is, yeah, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. I was gonna say, you're just like, right now you're not limited to what is actually doable. Like right now it's what can we, how far can we go? And then we can pull it back as needed. Yeah. And, and once you get all the elements built, like once you build, um, you know, this and you built a simple badge or you, and you built the monogram and you've built any of the little elements, you can, you can take those because they're separate and start combining them into all kinds of things. You probably can make us a, a badge series that you either turn into stickers or patches or whatever, and the, mm -hmm. or, or shirts. And now you've got, you went from one script that you did for fun to six or seven items that you could put on different things, just put in the store and sell for, for you know, side, side money. So or residual income or whatever. Uh, and that's kind of how I look at it. It's like, okay, I'm doing this fun project, you know, but okay, that's cool. Let's come out with a t-shirt and a hat and a patch and a sticker and throw it on whatever and call it a day and see what happens. Yes. Yeah. I always have fun after I have all the elements built to see what I can do with them after that. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's fun because if it works for like a sticker, it'll probably also work for a patch. We'll also work for a pin. Uh, we'll also work for a t-shirt or embroidered on a hat or painted on a wall or put on a koozie. I mean, like, you know, think about what the audience that would buy this particular kind of stuff is going to be people that I'm live next door to. <laughs> like, it's going to be, you know, Southern, good old Southerners. So yeah. uh, at least that's the, the thought behind it anyway. Yeah. Have you seen those, those glass cups that look like soda cans kind of? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen like, beer ones for that too. That would be really like really cool screen printed on it. That would be Requesting, a cool uh, <laughs> a cool uh, addition to the Creative South swag I already have for y'all. Hmm. And you and you still have swag from me. <laughs> I have swag. So oh much gosh. swag. It's, it's I, not I, funny. Yeah, I I made pens guys for Creative South two years ago before everything got got yeah. canceled. And they're in my garage. They've just, yeah, they've just been sitting just in Mike's sitting garage. For like two years. Still Everything is just, oh no. I, I actually had pens made also for um, for everybody. I don't think I have uh -huh. them on my desk. Um, Creative South pens. You remember the ones we had one year that were like clicker, like yeah. Draft One style clicker pens? And it had the yeah. logo on it. Mm -hmm. I ended up doing two new colorway, not ink colorways, but two new colorways on the outside. One was like silver uh -huh. with gold or silver and copper. And the other one's like navy and copper or something. Mm -hmm. But they're sitting in a box out there too, and yeah. they work fine. I, I grab one about once every couple of weeks. I'll go out there and swipe another one. But well, that's good to uh, know. Yeah. They're, I, did they're, so just I, like I a, think they're fine. Okay, that's good. I did a big click stick, so they're not like super expensive, but it's my favorite no, type but, of pen. And see, that's the part. That's the whole point. I like the ones I did too because I like draw. I like writing and drawing with that kind of pen. So, uh, what else can we do to this? Anybody? Any uh any other ideas on something Slate. else I can add to it? Slade says they want the they want it on a t-shirt. And they, we were talking about like yeah, we were talking about contract clauses in the chat. And so people are like, don't forget like the cancellation clause, the payment clause, yep. and then Krause says, and don't forget a Santa Claus just in case. <laughs> boom, boom. Shh. Nice one, sir. Nice one. I like doing these little elements for this kind of badges too, where you have like a diamond 
and then you've got like here and then maybe or maybe because we're using because we're near the river you know some kind of yeah and then, someone had know, mentioned earlier to the bridge oh the bridge could work yeah if i can figure out a way to incorporate the pedestrian bridge we we you know we should do we should do a like a scavenger hunt type thing where there's different like patches you can collect and we make them like little girl scout boy scout style patches of different things in columbus like that little that's cool. that little diamond you have there like that could be a patch it could it very well could and you have that down there stuck to i don't know put a sign down by the rapids or something yeah or like if I'm, you show up to the bridge it. party you get that that you little get a special badge. a special uh that's a cool idea i need to write that now send me that text me that okay i will text, text it to that you glass right thing. Now so text me that yet. the glass thing too because the glass thing is dope this would be cool on a glass piece of glass okay part. we're gonna but, do um, we're gonna do the the glass cup idea and girl and boy scout style patches boom done that's it and just remember I'm you know, to this. please send it to me just remember to like, uh, go ahead because that would be a lot of fun because then you don't it have really to do like awesome. yeah because the patches themselves don't have to be all that large you know because i mean girl scout boy scout ones are maybe like an inch in diameter oh yeah and then and then we could get a special sash made <laughs> yeah, you know how each one has like a different troop number. We could be Troop CS twenty twenty two. Who's making cookies? That's all I want to know. Who's, who's who's making the cookies? Well, we could find a way. Oh, we could find a way to do pretty much anything we need. I think we should do something. That'd be fun. Yeah. Plus, uh, I Gareth like says a beer tap label. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that can make that would make a good one. You're really cool. Wait, you and can... then go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just say with that kind of stuff, you know, pulling in, you know, your wheat for the side pieces, like so, you know, maybe curving around the sides here, having uh, uh you know, your wheat stalks coming here for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Would be kind of neat. Um that could work. Or Andrew having says, like uh, uh, hops. Go ahead. I was say Andrew says uh, do some type in dripping barbecue rib, like a burned in brand. <laughs> yes, that would fit my style, wouldn't it, brother? It would. We we do love really barbecue would. down there. You know that what I love so down good. there? The truffle fries. Oh, don't even get me started. I hadn't been. I've I've been over there once. I think this year. I know Kraus has been over there with his wife once or twice. Uh, I miss that place. I have to, yeah. I'll have to send you. My uncle gave me a truffle fry recipe when I was, I, when I went to visit them before the pandemic stuff. Yeah. Um, I was, I was telling them like about creative South and stuff. And I was like, and there's these truffle fries. And he goes, I can give you a recipe for truffle fries. All you have to do Seriously? is this. And he gave me this whole recipe and I was like, and then they sent me home with a bottle of truffle oil. Um, oh, that's that's what's up. Yeah, they're they're great family, and I love them. Um, he sends me good recipes, but so I still have yet to make it. But I can send you the recipe. Please send me the recipe with all other stuff we just talked about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we have who said? Where is it? Uh, Chris Edmonds says Troop CS 2022 would be brilliant. Cheryl says, I'll make the cookies. I make homemade mint cookies. Let's go. Um, oh, that's one of my favorites too. That and Samoa's. I did I bring you I did I bring you uh Fannie Mae mint chocolates when I came down you last did. You did. I did. And I brought yes. them to the to the conference we were all at in uh that's Grand where Rapids. no, that's where I had them. That's the only place I had them was at Grand Rapids. Yeah. Okay, I brought yeah, them Grand Rapids. That there. was fun. That was a fun trip. That was a that was a really fun trip. I just remind me, I will bring you a box of Fannie Mae mint chocolates. Yeah, let's go. I'll bring some for you, Jason, too, because I know you and Tina enjoyed them. Um, Erica says, so "Oh my god, I love them so much." 
Um, Erica says like a scavenger hunt, the different events you go to could be the different patches you get. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. These are all great ideas, y'all. Yeah. Cross says the initial. Guys. Yes. Cross says the initial badge could be the I put pants on today badge. <laughs> and then Kevin says, sell the cookies to Andrew Hawkrattle on a creative camp out. <laughs> Uh, Fairy says, don't say truffle. My wallet starts to cry. Um, yeah, people are people love truffle fries. They're so good. Um, Steve says, will we see Teddy Bear before you finish? He's he's on the bed. Like, I'd have to get oh, up yeah. and go where grab him. Okay, if we can. Yeah. Where's he at? I'll, I'll get him one second. I just got to make sure I stay in the correct frame. One moment. Oh, good. Come here, I'm just coloring this in because. Come here, sleepy. Here he is. He's very hairy right now. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, he he grew his coat out, didn't he? Yeah, he he chia pets. I'm I do that too, and, and it's called a beard. Yeah. Oh, Brian's in chat. Hey. Well. Yeah, he says UCDA, um, University and College Designers Association Conference in Grand Rapids was an awesome time. It, it <laughs> was, man. It was a it was a, a dope, dope time. We had a blast all, all staying in the same place and, and hanging out. It was a uh, y'all put on a good show, man. A real mm -hmm. good show. I was I was bummed I had to leave early. I just didn't plan myself very well. Yeah, but but it was a it awesome. was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, we had a good time. It was a, it was a good time. Yeah, uh, Cheryl says, "Hate to ask, but what is it about truffle oil? I can't explain it. It's just really good." Um, yeah, that is a hard one to explain. Yeah, you just gotta try it. And, and, and there's no halfway. Like you either love it or you hate it. Yep. But it is yep. very easy to use too much. And then you'll hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Fairy says, I made a coffee with some chocolate sprinkles and some grated cheddar cheese. What? What? All right. Okay. okay. You do you. H how was it? Was it good? <laughs> Ross says, the very hairy badge is now a thing. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that with you. Yeah. Jason says, we had the best time in roommates. And Brian says, I appreciate y'all's kind words. Uh, yeah, Michael man. Campbell says, I'll crush it. <laughs> yeah. Michael Campbell says, if you know, you know, truffle fries. Um, Erica says, truffle mac and cheese is good too. Yes. Um, and then chat was going crazy because Teddy showed up. He's just, he's just sitting here. One of these. He's a superstar. I know. One of these days, I want to take him down to Creative South. I just have to figure out logistics of bringing a dog into the hotel. Because then I'd have oh. to carry him around the whole time. Oh, it'd be all right with it. Yeah, because you would love to see everybody. You love to get loved on. This is his, and what people don't realize, like, this is his demeanor 99% of the time. Um, Like, my sister, my sister's boyfriend picks him up, and he holds him, and he just looks at him, and he goes... There is absolutely nothing going on on that head. <laughs> That's so messed up. I know, but it's true. He's I love him, but he's very he's he's just kind of there. Hey, he's just kind of there. He's enjoying himself, though. He is. He's my perfect little rescue. He's going to be ten in October. No way. I didn't know. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I adopted him. April 2013 and he was about a year and a half old when I adopted him and his his adoption day is April 6th so like it generally always falls when I'm at creative style oh no way yeah um Cheryl says they make doggy strollers and Noel says some hotels are dog friendly yeah, yeah I just there's he, some there are flying in an airplane though stresses him out so I'd have to like I'd have to sedate him because he does not like not being able to be in my lap. If he could sit on my lap the whole trip, he'd be fine. But um, 
Anytime I've had to put him in a carrier, he he does not like it. He fights it. He's fine in the airport, but when he's in the plane, he's not happy. Aww, okay, that's floppy. Not a, a short, short flight, but it's not a long, long flight either. It's it's not terrible. It's Chicago to Orlando is like depending what the wind is like. It's about like two and a half to three hours. Um, Chicago to Atlanta, I think, is around like two hours. It's not it's not terrible. Tara says, oh my God, that doggo can't be real. He's so cute. Thank you. He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. He has a small fan club on here on Adobe Live. Yeah, he does. There we go. There's a colored inversion. Yeah. Viola says, I understand those things are stressful for pets. Yeah, when, when my family first moved up here, um, we drove up here because I had to help them move. So we drove. And then he and I flew back. And then that July, we flew back up here and then we flew back to Florida. So he was on a plane three times in a year and I tried and he just, he just did not like it. <laughs> oh man. Um, Jason says, get him registered as an emotional support slash service animal and you can hold him. I've, I've considered it. I'd have to, I'd have to look into it because he is a good emotional support and he's just there. Um, fairy says answer to Mike for coffee with cheese and chocolate sprinkle. The combination is very addicting and tastes awesome. I have done it since a couple months ago. Now I'm going to have to try it. So you might as well go ahead and post that recipe. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious now post it in chat, please. Cause I'm, I'm definitely interested. So we actually are, it's, so it's 122 here. So 1122, we've got like three minutes before we got to go all right cool is that, how's that is that good a good place to stop as yeah. far as what we're going to try to build out tomorrow in illustrator we're going to take this over to illustrator tomorrow Sweet. and i'll show y'all how to quickly vector that that typography and uh and get that to where we can use it i think we're in a good spot as far as what i wanted to, to get from it i think all the suggestions are really super helpful and i think we can build out that badge and that monogram pretty quickly too to kind of tie it all together into one look and maybe we'll get to color it who knows we'll see anybody got mm -hmm. any questions about what i did or su any suggestions or comments i'm glad yeah. to, glad to answer them any last questions drop them now and i really appreciate everybody like, being here yeah because now we got like two minutes because i have to wrap up very quick very soon but we've got a moment uh, Kraus says, excellent, excellent job, bro. Can't wait to see the vector. Right on, right on. Me too. Hope it turns out. <laughs> and he says, thanks for hosting. You're welcome. It was a blast. Yeah, I really appreciate you, Sean. Ah, you're wonderful, Mike. I appreciate it. We had a good you. time. We had a good time. It was fun. Definitely safe. Everyone says, uh, looking great. Looking forward to seeing an illustrator. Um, looks very cool. Looking forward to tomorrow. Kevin says save. Um, oh, thanks, brother. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Definitely want to make sure we save. Thanks, dude. Because yeah, I wouldn't have. I would have just totally forgot to do that. Yeah. Oh, we yeah, our, our tagline here is sip, flip, and save. So drink your water, flip your canvas, save your work. Makes total sense. Total sense. Yeah. Well, at this point, got to start wrapping up. So it looks like it's time. But Mike, it has been an absolute blast having you with us Same. today and enjoy watching your creative process. Where can people find you? Uh, at Bucket826, pretty much everywhere. So uh, okay. Instagram, Twitter, that sort of thing. Sweet. Hug Hugnext.com. Or, or really creativesouth.com. Yeah, there's a hugs ne Hugnext.com. Or um, creativesouth.com. That's perfect. I love it. And you can also find Creative South on Instagram at Creative South. Sometimes um, you can find me at the buffet line. That too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. Well, <laughs> everyone, th thank you so much for joining us today. We will be back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time for part two with Mike Jones. Make sure you stick around for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge replays and intro, I think, today. 
with Andrew Hawk Rattle immediately followed yep. by a video editing editing live stream with Elise Swopes. So thank you guys for joining. We appreciate you. You're wonderful. Have a great day. See y'all. Thank you. See you tomorrow.